Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering Affinity Photo. In this episode, I'm going to demonstrate how to convert and process an image into black and white using Affinity Photo. As you can see, I have this landscape image here, and we're in the photo persona. I'd like to process this as a black and white image. It's super easy to do with Affinity Photo. You simply have to add to it a black and white adjustment layer. You can see over on the right-hand layers panel, I have the background layer. This is the pixel layer. And to add a black and white adjustment layer, I can simply just click on the adjustment tab and grab the black and white adjustment layer there. Or another way to do it, and maybe the more common way most of us do it, is we go up to the layer tab up here at the top, or the layer menu, and we go down to new adjustment layer, and then down to black and white adjustment. And as soon as we add that adjustment layer, it converts our image into black and white. And this dialog box appears. This is called the black and white mix. And you'll notice that the dialog box has six sliders, red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. Those sliders correspond to the colors that were in the color image. And with those sliders, you could make those color colors that were in the color image lighter or darker. So because this is a black and white image, we're effectively going to affect the luminance values of those colors. For example, we know that in the color image, the sky was blue. If I go to the blue slider and I move it down, we're going to make whatever was blue in that color image darker. And you could see the sky is getting darker. Conversely, if I moved it to the right, we'd make whatever was blue lighter. So I'd like the sky a little darker, so I'll move the blue slider to the left. Now we know the grass is green, so if I go to the green slider, and I move it to the right, you'll see the grass get brighter. If I move it to the left, the grass gets darker. Now, grass actually has a lot of yellow in it, and you'll find that the yellow slider most often affect the grass more so than the green slider. So when I go to this yellow slider, you can see that that's having a more dramatic effect on the green grass and even the trees in the background. Now, typically what I like to do with a landscape image that has like a lot of green grass or trees in it is I like to bring the green slider down to make the greens darker. And I go to the yellow slider and I move that to the right to make the yellows brighter. I find that that, in my opinion, adds a little more tonal depth to my image. So instead of being a uniform gray, it's a more mottled gray. It's got a little bit of lighter and darker gray all intertwined. And I think that works very effectively in this image. Now, for this image, I don't think red's going to work as much. It's working those hay bales a little bit. So maybe we'll make those hay, hay bales a little brighter. Move that to the right. Cyan should affect the sky similarly to how blue affected. And you can see as I move it to left, it's making the sky even a little darker. Let's do that. Pull it down a little bit. And I don't think magenta is going to do anything in this image. So magenta doesn't do anything. Now, as far as this dialog box, you could see it has some other features. We could add a preset. So if we find we're always using the same kind of mix here, we could give the preset a name, and then we could uh, use this preset uh, all you know to uh, save time. Instead of coming in and adjusting the sliders individually, we could just pick the preset. Personally, I don't think I need a preset. I find that the color mix is very, very... Um, particular to the image I'm using or I'm doing. So I don't think a preset for me would work. Now you can see over here, there's a little picker button. If you click on that, your cursor, it's hard to see, but we'll have this little gauge thing on the bottom below it. And what this allows you to do is to target specific parts of your image and adjust it that way. Meaning if I want to adjust this guy, I could just simply click on the picker, go over the sky, click with my left mouse button and hold it in, and then drag to the right and you'll see the sky's getting brighter. If I drag to the left, sky is getting darker and you'll notice the blue slider is moving as well. So I could do that. I could just take the picker and I could go in 
and adjust various parts of the image um, with that instead of manually moving the sliders. It really doesn't matter, whichever works for you. Um, just do it. Now, you'll also notice there's blend modes. Uh, blend modes, won't, as I mentioned before, they're not often used with adjustment layers. Although at times, especially with the black and white adjustment layer, you could get some unique kind of grungy or washed out color looks with blend modes. So we could click on this and as we hover over them, you'll see like we got a black and white sky and we with darker color and we have a very colorful uh, grass area. There's multiply, color burn. You can see some of them will be totally off the wall. So you could just kind of hover over these and see if there's anything, any kind of unique look you like. And most of them are going to be unusable. Like there's kind of a washed out color look with average. So anyway, that's blend modes. I'm going to leave this on normal. And typically, you know, that's what we'll do with the black and white adjustment layer. Now there is this little gear here, and I'm going to talk about this more in future uh, episodes. This is the blend ranges. And I actually did kind of touch on this, I think, in the very first episode we ever did. This is how you get the top layer, which is the black and white adjustment layer, to blend with the bottom layer, the layers below it, which in this case is one layer, the background pixel layer. And you could see if I move this, we'll start to blend them. So we're taking some of the black and white pixels and blending them with the colored pixels by moving these, these arms here. And you could do different tonal parts of the image with that. So again, it's, we'll cover that more, more so in a future episode of what you could do with this. Blend options are often used when you're swapping skies and blending skies and things like that in landscape photography. And sometimes it's in portraiture with a little bit of um, some techniques you would do a portraiture. And again, we'll cover that when the time comes. So this is pretty much the entire black and white adjustment layer and what you could do with it. Now, I didn't say that you can move opacity also. That kind of makes you washed out color look if you want that. Now, there's some other things you could do beyond the black and white adjustment layer to your monochrome image, which will help you maybe better process it into something that fits your style. Now, I'm going to close this down. We still are going to leave it there. But what we're going to do is we're going to add another adjustment layer. But I don't want to add this adjustment layer on top of the black and white adjustment layer. I want to add this adjustment layer between the background and the black and white adjustment layer. So to do that, I'm going to click on this background layer so that it is active. So that's the background pixel layer. And I'm going to go up to layer, then down to new adjustment layer. And we're going to add a white balance adjustment. Now, when I do that, you can see it's in between the black and white adjustment layer and the background layer. It's important that this goes below the black and white adjustment layer. If it was above, it wouldn't do anything. So it has to do its thing on the layer below it, which is the background layer. And you'll notice this will have a dramatic effect on your image. If I take the white balance slider and I move it, you can see how it's really affecting really all the pixels in the image. And basically, when I move it to the left, it's making pretty much everything darker. Move it to the right, everything a little lighter. Uh, the tint, similarly, you can see it's affecting different parts of the image. So when I move it to the right, it's making basically the greens and yellows a little darker. And if I move it to the left, it's making a little bit of more of the blues and the cyans a little darker, and not affecting the um, greens and the yellows as much. Now, with this, um, this white balance adjustment layer, usually what you would do is you would use the white balance slider to just either make everything a little brighter or darker. And then you would use this tint slider to try to balance the image or maybe make it unbalanced on purpose, meaning you want the sky um, a lot darker than the greens or vice versa. And you could do that with the tint slider. So this is kind of a handy little thing to do to a monochrome image after you add the black and white adjustment layer. 
Now, the final thing you could do, or another thing you could do, is you could use local adjustments. So we could adjust very specific parts of the image. And again, to do this, you're going to want to make sure that you're going to do it between the background layer and the black and white adjustment layer. So this again has to go in the middle. So we're going to click on the background layer. So it's definitely going to be between that layer. Um, we could leave that white balance adjustment layer there. And we're going to go down and we're going to add a new pixel layer. So right here, you'll see add pixel layer. And we're going to click on that. And you can see that it is now between the adjustment layers and the background layer. And what we're going to do, we're going to change the blend mode of this pixel layer to overlay. You can see that it didn't do anything to the image. So I'm going to turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on. And it doesn't matter what blend mode we use, it's not doing anything to the image. So we're going to keep it in overlay blend mode. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get a brush. You could hit the B key on your keyboard to get the brush tool. Now we got a humongous brush. I'm going to get a smaller brush for this. Just start. And usually for this, you don't want to paint with 100% opacity. And usually you'd like to paint with something less. And I'm going to go to, let's say, 25%. I'm going to leave flow and hardness. Uh, flow at 100 and hardness at 0. I want to use a very soft brush. brush. And then what I want to do is I want to uh, paint in white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these R, G, and B sliders, and I'm going to move them all the way to the right so we get a white color swatch right there. So I'm going to paint in white. Now what I want to do is I want to just brighten or darken specific parts of the image. Not affect the entire image, just where I want it to happen with the paintbrush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of lighten up this a little bit down in here. So I'm bringing like kind of a path uh, from the corner. Now what you have to keep in mind, every brush troop stroke I do is cumulative. I'm painting at an opacity of 23%, but every time I brush over that area, it's going to add to it. So you have to be conscious of that and be careful that you don't overdo it. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up from here. Now I have that coming in from the corner. Let me try to center that a little better. There we go. We got that coming in from the corner. Now, often what I like to do when I'm doing kind of like this path is I like to darken the edges a little bit. So, I obviously, if I'm painting in white on this overlaid pixel layer, it's making it brighter. If I paint in black, it'll make it darker. Now, to get black, I could just click there, or I could have just took these sliders and moved them all the way down to zero. Now, we're painting in black. Now for this one, I'm going to bring opacity even a little lower. You can see I'm bringing it maybe around, even maybe a little lower, like 10%. And I'm just going to get a tiny bit bigger of a brush. And then what I like to do is just go on the outside of where I just painted the, um, the brighter lines. That's the way I like to do it. And it kind of like gives it a more of an outline. And I think this hay bale here is just a little bright, so I'm going to bring that down a little bit and paint on that. And again, this is cumulative, so every time I brush over the areas, it makes it a little darker. So you can see now I have this um, kind of path going diagonally through the image, and that adds a little interest. It's a little bit heavy. So what I could do is I could go to this layer, and we have this opacity... Um, drop down. Now there's, you might have noticed when I was adjusting the brush, I went right over the word opacity and I would click and I could adjust it there. That's called a scrubby slider. So I could go where it says opacity and just click on the word opacity and drag my mouse left or right and it will affect the opacity. To me that's faster than hitting the little drop down and then using the slider. But you can see as I move the slider left or right, we're affecting the opacity of this pixel layer we added. And I could make it like blend in a little better, like not as heavy as that. 
So I'm going to bring it down just a little bit like that, I think is good. So that kind of adds a little more uh, visual interest to the image, uh, I found, especially if you could, um, if your image already has a little bit of a path in it, a landscape image, you could kind, kind of accentuate that path with this method and it will help lead your viewer through the image a little bit. I found when you're doing diagonals, they seem to work best if they come from the bottom left-hand corner going up towards the upper right-hand corner. I really didn't have that in this image. It looked more natural coming from the lower right. But that's something you could work with and experiment with your uh, pictures to see what works for you. So that's really everything you need to know on processing an image into monochrome. You can see there's a lot you could do with it, a lot of different little tweaks and tricks you could do to hopefully uh, give you a very dynamic, impressive looking monochrome image. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.